A shocking accident by Graham Greene. Um, the main thing to focus on with regards to this author is what he uh, tried to accomplish in his writing. If you look at the bottom paragraph on the left page there, it says that his fiction focused on the psychology of human character rather than on plot. And I think it, it's nice that we uh, talk about this in the same unit and really close with Virginia Woolf who got away from the plot structure as well. This was not a main focus of him either, and this is a good. Uh, this story is a good example of that fact. It says many of his protagonists are people without roots or beliefs, people in pain. They may be odd, but they almost always excite the reader's curiosity and pity. And we'll get to that one in a little bit. And almost always, Green treats them with compassion as they strive to achieve salvation. And so the main character in this story, a shocking accident, is a little kid. And the little kid is told that your father has had an accident. So he is hurt, something happened to him. And so of course you want to, to, you have pity for that little kid, you have empathy for that individual. And now what is ironic about this is if you can kind of combine the, the accident with the big picture on that next page, uh, the father was walking around a street in Naples, Italy when a pig fell off its balcony and landed on him, and it killed him, okay? So that is the premise. The beginning of this story is uh, just like you've seen in movies where, uh, you know, an administrator comes and, and takes a kid away because they have to tell them something. You know, somebody had an accident, somebody died, whatever. And so this kid, who has a very glamorized view of what his father is in life, a big traveler, and he heard that, heard that his father died you know, he almost puts all of these stories like you'll see like he was a spy or, you know, he was he was out there, you know, like a military man. He was he was important. The, the death was noble. I'm sure he got a whole bunch of people before they got him. Is that right? Is that what happened to him? Well, no, uh, a pig landed on him. He was killed by a falling pig. So not very heroic or glamorous and all these things. And so what struggles this kid has going forward is every time he tells this story to people or people hear it, what do you think the reaction is? Uh, laughing. Laughing. And so you'll see that he struggles with this, not understanding the humor in it because he's a kid. But as he grows, people start laughing and he struggles with that. So he struggles with uh, how can I tell this story without with, with taking the humor out of it? And you'll see how he tries to accomplish that. Ultimately, the, the, the mild plot at the end it's not really much of a plot, is that he finds this woman that he wants to marry. And going forward, he is going to be a father, and so the story, all this, the feelings about his father come back, he has to tell this story, but he really is scared that if he tells this story to his girlfriend or fiance, that she is going to laugh. And that would be crushing to him. So we have a little kid finding out about his dad, a shocking accident uh, by Graham Greene. Shocking Accident by Graham Greene. Uh, so the story, as we set up prior to this, the kid is being told that your father died. And if you come back with me to 1264, turn back to 1264, the second page of the story. When Mr. Wordsworth is talking to him, the physical description that Graham Greene is writing for Wordsworth face, uh, have you ever had the giggles when you shouldn't? Have you ever, and, and then it's harder than anything to stop? And, it, and uh, usually the more outlandish the situation, the funnier it is. Uh, you know, for me, it's usually at viewings and funerals. I start giggling about something. I find that my defense mechanism is humor. And so that's how I kind of deal with it. And we've gotten some looks before by a group that I got laughing. And we're like, okay, maybe we should be quiet a little bit. But then in a couple places, it was like, in my grandfather, it was like party. We were ripping everybody up. They're like, that's how he would have wanted it. You know? So, whatever. Uh, don't judge me. Um, but anyways, down here at the bottom of this page, when, uh, the, you know, they say he died quite without pain, and in, uh, in Jerome's mind, it's, you know, wow, the, the, they must have shot him in the heart, and then, you know, something. He, he gave this this man some, some sort of uh, job and profession that, that was going to be real action-filled. Surely this is his, his manly dad. And, well, no, a, a, a pig fell on him. And if you look there, it says that an inexplicable convulsion 
took place in the nerves of Mr. Wordsworth's face. It really looked for a moment as though he were going to laugh. And I'm sure we can all see what that looks like. No, a pig landed on him. One of those type things, right? Really impassioned, trying to hold it in. And then it said that um, he closed his eyes, composed his features, and said rapidly, as it were necessary to expel the story as rapidly as possible. So like, I gotta get through this. I gotta get through this with a straight face. I can't laugh. I'm telling a kid his dad just died. So taking a moment, your father was walking along the street in Naples when a pig fell on him. Shocking. Shocking accident. And then it says he turned around to the window and he notices his back was shaking with emotion, right? He probably thought that the guy was really tore up about it, but what was he doing over there? <laughs> Trying to hold an inch of something. And he just died. Not that that's funny, but a pig landing on him, pretty funny. Okay, and so this kid has to carry this story around forever, and his aunt, has, who's clueless, will tell the story to anybody, and that's when the pig fell on him. And that's when people who already know the story get, start to get really excited. And he says that's when people's interest gets genuine, because they're like, I, I want to hear how this ends. They've heard things. And so that's where it, it comes to the, 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 I guess, the future or the present, if this rest is told in flashback. Um, he has this girlfriend. A fiance, he wants to marry her, and he's petrified about how she's going to react. Because his reaction at the very end of hearing about it the first time, he was curious about, well, what happened to the pig? That's a kid response, isn't it? That's a kid response as to, uh, I'm trying to paint this picture as to what happened. Oh, is the pig okay? Well, yes, my, my dad died. I, I just, I'm trying to get all the variables lined up in the story. Is the pig fine? And what was ironic about the very end, and if you looked at the look at the last page again, the moment she found out about the, the aunt said it, she goes, oh, that's horrible. So, so far she's acting exactly like he wants, which is good, because knowing in the future I'm going to have a kid, and then I all these feelings while my dad came up, and then, oh, gosh, I, I cannot handle this if my soulmate is going to respond like everybody back at school used to respond. I don't think I can handle that. And so to see her be so emotional about it, perfect. But it's even more perfect than that. If you look at the last line, or last lines of this, what was the one question that she asked? What do you suppose happened to the pig? Boom! The same thing that he wondered. So they're, they're succinct, right? They're lined up. They're perfect for each other. Because, well, he was a child and he thought it now. So maybe she has the intellect of a child. I don't think it's going that far. But just that they are both connected with regards to that they were thinking about all of the, the components of the story. Instead of laughing or holding it in or, or shaking, holding it in, like the, the headmaster, Mr. Wordsworth, was doing, she responded in the same way that he wanted same way that he did. And so yes, there was a tragic thing that happened, but in the end it's kind of a, a happy ending uh, for, for little Jerome. And it, it, the way that he practiced the story, he took he did it in a couple ways. One was, I'm going to tell this long, drawn out, boring story and just kind of drop it in that a pig fell on him at the end, hoping that people were so bored with it they weren't really listening. So that's one way he figured out. And then the other way was just right off the bat, yeah, nice to meet you. Nice. My dad died. Guy by a falling pig. Um, what? Yeah, he was walking in Naples and a pig fell on him. There's no setup. The setup for Wordsworth, because it was so funny, was he has to call this kid down to his office. He has to be gen you know, genuine to his feelings, be very calm. So there's a lot of buildup in his mind. He's been thinking about it a lot. So of course it's hilarious to Wordsworth. Okay. And so for Jerome, he needed to take the humor out of it. And so he grows up not having to tell a story for a long time, and then it's with the, the young lady he wants to get married to that he has to, co to convey that story, and he's petrified as to her reaction. So kind of a happy ending here at the end. Um, but uh, again, I guess it is a story with death, but completely different uh, than the depression of uh, Virginia Woolf uh, from earlier. So um, I thought you might enjoy that just for some. We don't get a lot of comedy in our British literature. Um, it, 
you know, stereotypical British literature is very dry. If anybody knows like Monty Python and some of the older PBS shows late at night type uh, humor, it's not, it doesn't necessarily translate well all the time. Um, what I found out with my wife is uh, the later you watch something, the funnier it is. You know what I mean? If you're like, yeah, it's pretty hilarious sometimes, but then you're like, why do we kind of, wow, this is not funny at all. 